Hey, what's up? This is Paul Murphy. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can configure your own video inside of EverWebinar 4.0. Um, it's pretty similar to 3.0, but there's a couple of best practices that will help you to sort of get the most out of your um, EverWebinar experience, right? And most out of your presentations. So there's a couple of options you can do. You can do your own MP4 file, you can do YouTube or Vimeo Pro. Now I'm not gonna cover Vimeo Pro because that's kind of like 30, 40 bucks a month. That's actually quite a premium feature and it's not really needed because you can use YouTube but you can also use Amazon S3 which is a super cheap option and um, Amazon S3 is what used to like be streamed from Netflix. I don't know if they still um, stream it from Amazon S3. So it's pretty robust, it's pretty good and it works really well. So the first one I'm going to go into is YouTube. Now, you'll see at the moment I've got it configured to YouTube. Now, obviously, you can use a previous um, webinar jam live session. So if you've run a live webinar and you love your, uh, that, you know, that, that converted really well, it worked really well, then you can switch it over to here seamlessly and it works great. So we're obviously not going to cover that because all you need to do is press this and then you pretty, pretty much select your webinar. Um, so the first one I want to go over is YouTube. But you'll actually notice the little YouTube logo down on the right hand corner. Now there may be a way to get rid of that, but I haven't actually discovered it. Now, the, obviously there's a limitation with that because what that means is, is that people will be able to see that it's not live. I mean, obviously being yesterday's replay, that obviously means it's not live. But if they can actually open this in a new tag or they can press this, but what they can actually see is the actual original date it was uploaded and they can also see how many people have watched it. So that can be good or bad, but like, you know, like if it's only a few people that have watched it, then that could that could hurt your conversions. And also on the other side, like if it was like like hundreds of thousands of people that have watched it and it, and the video is like 2 years old, but it's still converting and it's still working really well, that could hurt your conversions because people could think, well this offer's old, it's not really relevant anymore. So I don't generally use YouTube, but if you want to use YouTube, what I would recommend is to switch off comments. So because obviously people are going to be putting stuff in here that everybody's going to be able to read. Um, and although you can actually have comments in sort of streaming in every webinar, you can edit them. So if there's, you know, inappropriate stuff, you can actually delete them. You can obviously do that on your YouTube channel. You can delete them. But if you're running this, you know, quite a few times a day, you might not notice certain comments coming in. And again, that can that can hurt your business. So I'd recommend switching that off. And um, But I wouldn't recommend using YouTube. What I would actually recommend is using Amazon S3. Now, Amazon S3, you, I think you can get like free for a year or free for a few months. Um, and you only pay for what you use. And it's pretty cheap. Like it's literally, I, you know, I actually get bills in each month for like a pound or 30p or 50p super super cheap and i'm running webinars constantly with this so this is pretty good and like i say it's pretty robust it is one of the like one of the more robust services um so you would obviously come to amazon just put in amazon s3 on google um and you just create your free account and this is this is what we're going to use okay and you've got five gig of storage data now if you're running lots of different webinars i've got a little ninja trick i'm going to show you um, on, and also how you can actually reduce the, the, the size of your video file without it being um, compromised. So what you can actually do is I actually use ScreenFlow. So when I render my videos on ScreenFlow, they often come out like for like a two hour presentation. If I actually come to my webinars here, you'll actually see that this one is the one I actually created yesterday. And this is 2.8 gig. So you can literally only put in one or two files for your five gig storage and then you've got to kind of up your storage on Amazon. So what you can do here, okay, a little ninja trick, is you can upload it to YouTube, okay, and I've actually got one I need to do here now. I literally just uploaded this uh, today. And then once, you, you might have to wait about an hour, two hours for this to go to 1080p, okay, because you want the best quality. Um, when you first upload it, it will have 360p or something like that down here. So you do need to wait for YouTube to render it properly. YouTube will actually make it go live, but they would, but they are going to make it super high quality within a short space of time. It usually takes about two or three hours. So you will need to wait for that to happen. This one's done. I only actually uploaded this about an hour or so ago and it's already done. So I'm just going to do a refresh. So you'll actually see that this is now 1080p and this is pretty good quality. Now this was 2.8 gig when I uploaded it. 
But what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to download it from YouTube and upload the downloaded file to Amazon S3. Um, because what happens is when you download it from YouTube, you don't lose any quality whatsoever, but it actually reduces the file to a, like a tenth of the size. It's pretty, it's like it's incredible. Um, so what we do, how we do that is, um, it's pretty ninja this, like you might not have seen this before, is you just go up to the URL at the top here, okay? And then where it goes www dot, and then something YouTube, just put in SS, okay? And then it's going to open up this page here. And you'll see that it's got this with low quality. Now, it's not going to be low quality. It's actually going to be perfect. But they just say that because they're trying to sell you stuff. So obviously, try not to click anything else that's going to give you too much uh, spam in your folder and send anything. So obviously, just uh, actually, if you leave it for a few seconds, this seems to come up. But if not, you can just click that link and then we just click download now. And that's now done. So you'll actually see that this is the one we just downloaded. You'll actually see that the file size is 323 megabytes versus this one here, which is 2.82 megabytes. So it's almost a tenth of the size, just over, maybe a fifteenth of the size. Now, the, the advantages of reducing it in size, obviously, you can use up more space in your Amazon because you usually get like five gig of data for your first uh, account and then you can kind of upgrade. Um, so it means you can upload more files and run more files. But secondly, I believe it runs a bit smoother because it's a smaller file. Um, I have no evidence of that, but I just think it does. So I like to reduce the file size and that's my sort of like ninja trick of doing it. So the next thing we want to do is we want to upload it. We want to get rid of all this spam that we've been sent. <laughs> and then we want to upload it to uh, so that we can get rid of this. So we go to our M M Amazon uh, uh, S3 account. Now I'm going to come out of here. And what you'll do is you'll obviously come to Amazon S3. You'll sign up and then you'll come in here and then you'll just need to create a bucket. So you just press this and you just call it wherever you want. And it's just where you're going to hold everything. And then inside this bucket, we're going to upload this file. So I've uploaded, it, basically, this is the same file as this, but it's slightly, I've made a replay version that's just removed one sentence just to make it so that it kind of makes sense on a replay. Um, and that's it. So we're going to upload that video, which, which we just did. And then what you need to take note of here is we're going to go to documents. We're going to go to webinars. We're going to go reduce size. And it's this one here. So what we're going to do, just make a couple of changes while we're uploading this. Okay, we go to next. And what we need to do here is we need to untick this one because we don't want anyone to be able to change it. But we do need to grant public access. Okay, and it's going to come up with a massive warning, but that's fine. So it's going to say, look, everyone in the world, <laughs> sounds a bit drastic, but, you know, this is fine. This is what we want. So we untick that and we do grant public access here. Okay, so we want grant public access and that's all we need to do. And then that's going to upload. That will just take a couple of minutes. So we're just going to press, keep going through, upload. Now that's going to take a minute. So we'll, we'll come back in a sec. That's now complete. So we're just going to, so you can see this is 314 meg. So this is the right one. And we actually, for this one, we want the replay version. But actually, I'm, actually I don't. But I'm just going to show you that it works. So we're just going to check it. Um, but I'm actually not going to use the replay version because I'm actually going to put that in a page and not in a webinar. But we're just going to check it works. So that's absolutely fine. So we're happy with that works. And then what we're going to actually do is I'm going to grab this one. So this is the one we're going to grab and we're going to put it into here instead of YouTube. So I'm just going to drop that in. I know that that's the right length, but you can actually just, obviously when you check it, you could, the time will come up here. So you just need to make sure that that is obviously put in correctly here just to make it all run perfectly. And I'm actually not going to configure this. We're just going to do this as a test. So we've got a landing page here. So when we register, we should be able to watch yesterday's replay straight away. There we go. And then we're just going to sign up. I'm going to get a ton of emails. <laughs> so the great thing about um, Ever Webinar is that you can do a yesterday's replay now. They've kind of added this in on the new launch of, of Webinar Jam 4.0. And they had it on Webinar Jam 3.0, but only it's quite a recent new feature. Pretty cool feature. Means that people can pause, which I really like because it means that they're not sort of like thinking like it, feeling like they have to kind of be there live if they want to get a drink or go and do something. 
but they kind of have to watch it all the way through um, to get to the next to, to the next part of the video, right? So as you can see now that the YouTube thing's gone, there's no way of seeing where this is coming from whatsoever. This is now running as though it's. I mean, obviously, if it wasn't yesterday's replay, it would be running live, and they wouldn't even be able to pause it. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Um, I recommend using S3. It doesn't cost very much. It's pretty sim simple, but it's also going to allow your webinars to run seamlessly um, and people can actually sign up for this all over the place. Like loads of people can be signing up at different times a day. It's going to run really well. And uh, yeah, but if not, if you're kind of that, if that's a bit too much for you, then obviously you can use the YouTube option. A lot of people have done that and it works absolutely fine. So if you like my video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.